My name is Melissa Render. I'm the VP of Exploration for Newfound Gold. I'm here to provide some context for our flyover video of the Appleton Fault Zone. We are midway through a 500,000 meter drill program and this video starts about two kilometers south of the Keats Zone. There you can see the projection of the Appleton Fault. This is the major crustal scale fault that is believed to be the conduit for the gold bearing fluids responsible for producing the number of gold zones along this segment of the Appleton Fault. I'm pausing the video here at our, our first stop. Uh, this is the Knob Prospect. Here, this is a historical showing. It's located about 200 meters east of the Appleton Fault. I'm going to dive into the geologic model here to provide a bit more context for this particular showing. So here you can see the Trans-Canada Highway, the Keats Zone, and down here is, is Knob. Knob is comprised of a series of kind of east-west uh, oriented structures similar to that of the Keats Baseline Fault Zone. We've done very little work through this area. Uh, you may have seen our most recent news release where we disclosed new results from uh, the rocket vein, which is this one here. It's more of a north-south oriented structure and a hit into the quarry vein, but really it's kind of in between quarry and knob and is likely part of the continuation of this, of this structure. Here you can see the mineralization is more constrained to the gray wackies. This is a coarser grained sediment. It's a type of sandstone. Um, and that's these volumes here that you can see that basically track along the full lengths of the Appleton. So that's a bit different than some of our other zones. They typically occur immediately adjacent to and within shale units all the way along the fault. Uh, so Nob is a bit unique in that it is sitting um, a bit further off, off the uh, off the break than, than we see elsewhere. And this here is the Appleton Fault Zone, just in case you, <laughs> I hadn't pointed that out. I just wanna draw your attention to the west side of the fault in this particular area. As you know, we've made several new discoveries along the west side of the fault, and this area in here, you can see we've done very limited work. So this is obviously a point of interest for us, and we hope to be exploring in here in the near future. So continuing north from Knob along the Appleton, uh, we're going to fly over a series of other zones. We've kind of tried to highlight some of these significant intervals. Uh, we're heading now over Rocket, which I had just shown you in the model. And we're headed towards an area known as TCH. Uh, it occurs just south of the Trans-Canada Highway. And it's a zone that's sitting basically in the footwall to the Appleton. Uh, we've done a bit of work here. We've identified some pretty interesting uh, breccia domains, low-grade gold mineralization, and localized high-grade. But for now, we're kind of focusing on some of our other priority targets. I'll just point to where we're at in the model to give you, uh, to give you that understanding as we fly into the TCH area. So here's the Trans-Canada, and the TCH zone is a zone that's sitting right in here in the footwall to the Appleton. Uh, so when we refer to the footwall, that means we're, we're sitting right on the east side of it. And, and the west side is what we refer to as the hanging wall. So from here, we're going to fly into um, the southern extents of the Keats Baseline Fault that really picks up just through here. That would be the, the most southern extents of the baseline and where it, it more or less would interact with the Appleton Fault Zone as it strikes away in, in a kind of east-northeast direction and dips off to the southeast. And this is that major structure that controls majority of the mineralization at the Keats main zone. So the veins are, are hosted in and around this significant damage zone is what we like to refer to it as. So here we are headed over towards the Trans-Canada Highway, as you just saw in the model. That pond straight ahead of us is South Herman's Pond. And this cleared area off to the east is the drill footprint for the exploration that's taking place around the Keats Main Zone. Uh, so here we're just coming over the southern extents of it. So that's the deepest portion of the Keats Main Zone that has been explored to date. Typically, for the deepest holes that we've put in there are about 450 meters vertical. 
as this is where the high grade plunges off towards the Appleton. Here we're highlighting a number of significant intervals, uh, no shortage of them, along the strike length of the Keats Baseline Fault, which essentially would track under the southern end of South Herman's Pond and off to kind of the top right corner of the video here. I'm just going to pause and switch over to the to the model uh, to help put this in context because you'll see here we're we're flying northeast along South Herman's Pond um, and we see the introduction of the Keats West Zone as well over on the west side of the of the Appleton. Uh, so here let's take a look in the in the model to help put that into uh, into perspective. So we've crossed over the Trans Canada Highway and we're heading along the Appleton and you can see here um, South Herman's Pond in, in uh, the blue and the Keats Baseline Fault. And this is a quite a complex structure. There are a number of vein arrays that are hosted within it as I was stating earlier as well as like conjugate vein orientations that cross cut the Baseline Fault and these are very important for producing very high grade domains of, of gold mineralization. So through here is where we have uh, the umbra and penumbra structures and then the continuation of the baseline here and this is the area known as iceberg. This is one of our more recent discoveries, a very significant one where we've put out some pretty spectacular results and, and the interpretation here is that we've got a through going structure that has displaced the baseline fault and has moved it over into this area here where it then continues on. So you can see our, our density of drilling through here. All of these holes have been released so far. We're continuing to expand on this and follow this zone to depth and a long strike out towards road. Uh, so right now these zones uh, remain open. Uh, the baseline fault continues off to the east uh, and we have not determined the full extent of it yet but we are very encouraged by uh, the results we've seen so far um, at Iceberg and continuing out to Iceberg East which is this segment here. Jumping over onto the west side of the Appleton Fault Zone is Keats West. Here you can see we've got a very different structural regime. The Keats West Zone was discovered through testing in the hanging wall to the Appleton, looking for the continuation of the umbra and penumbra structures onto the other side of the fault. Uh, at that time we didn't understand if there had been much post-mineral movement along the Appleton and if these zones do in fact carry over to the other side. We had moved over here looking for the continuation of these zones thinking we had identified it but then quickly learned through drilling that this structure is completely different and in a completely different orientation. It dips off to the south, southwest at a very moderate angle so this is interpreted to be what we refer to as a thrust fault. And within that thrust fault are very broad domains of low grade and high grade mineralization that can be 30 plus meters thick and comprised of a series of stacked veins that more or less parallel this structure. Again, the extents of which we do not know yet. You can see our current fo footprint as of right now. Um, so we're continuing to expand on this, but um, this was a very exciting discovery for us and really was a game changer in terms of forcing us to look differently uh, at the west side of the Appleton Fault. Uh, up until this point, we'd really been focused on the east side. Again, hard not to, given the success that we had had to date. Uh, so this opened up a whole new world for us where we are now systematically exploring the west side of the fault, hoping to uh, identify new structures and keeping our eyes open for this orientation of structure. 
Uh, I should also note that Newfound's initial discovery hole into the core of it was drilled in late 2019. And here we are today having expanded this fault over, I think it's about 1.9 kilometers to date and down to depths of about 450 meters. Keats West discovery is new. Uh, we only just identified that at the end of last year. I believe it was in September of 2022. So you can see how quickly we can expand on these zones. Keats West is right at surface. I mean, majority of the Keats main zone as well, but because of the shallow dipping nature of it, the, the deepest extents of it right now are above 130 meters vertical. Okay, I'm gonna flip back to the video. So here we are approaching the north end of South Herman's Pond. You can see the location of, of Keats West here on the, on the west side of the Appleton Fault. The north end of Keats and Keats North, which I haven't pointed out yet in the video. And more importantly, um, the Iceberg Discovery, which is believed to be the, the continuation of the Keats Baseline Fault. From here, as we track north across ponds, we're going to jump to North Herman's Pond. Uh, this is the location of the Golden Joint Discovery. Uh, this was identified in 2021, I want to say, mid-2021, uh, through systematic testing, but also drawn to this area because of a soil anomaly and an interesting structural intersection that was observed in trenching as well as in topographic lineaments that we're trekking through this area. So majority of this zone is beneath North Herman's Pond. It's a steeply dipping north-south oriented structure but of course again has a number of, of splays and kind of bifurcating uh, vein arrays that are associated with this. Currently we actually are working to expand this zone to surface through barge drilling. Uh, so again, because we couldn't access it because of the pond, but we now are accessing this area with a barge to test the upper about 100 meters or so. So I'm just going to switch back to the leapfrog video. And I should also note in this model, I have tried to only limit it to the most prominent and robust structures and veins that we have just so that you can better see in clarity the, the major orientations. There are a number of subordinate veins and vein arrays associated with these structures. So right now I only have plotted kind of what we, we believe to be the, the key veins, but there are a number of others that are, are quite important to this picture that are gold bearing that I don't have plotted at the moment. So in here, uh, I've just got the, the golden joint main vein is what we call it, just in here. Uh, so you can see it sits right in the foot wall to the Appleton. In the shales, so here the gray wackies track through, but it's actually kind of between the gray wackies and the Appleton. It's a very steeply north-south dipping vein, dips off to the west. And we're currently working from the pond here to access the upper portions of it. This has a very high grade, steeply plunging domain that is believed to be controlled by the interaction of the golden joint vein with the Appleton Fault. Okay, so now we're going to continue moving northeast along the Appleton. The, uh, the next significant discovery is, is dome. As you can see here, again, very similar uh, structural orientation to the baseline fault. Dome is one of the historical showings on the project that really sparked the interest in this block of land. We aren't actively exploring it now. We've done a bit of work, you can see, taking it down, I think, to about 100 meters vertical or so. and I've identified some pretty nice domains of high grade within that structure. And I've done work to kind of to follow it along strike, look at where it might play a role in, in concentrating gold at, at Golden Joint, 
as well as a long strike to Lotto, which is our next major vein to the to the north here. Uh, so while I've got it open, this is the, the Lotto main vein, another more or less north-south striking, uh, steeply east dipping vein. I've only got the main segment of the vein loaded at the moment. This was identified at the back end of 2020, I believe. So this was after the Keats discovery, starting that initial 100,000 meter drill program. Uh, we were drawn to this area because of, a, again, a historical showing in, in, I believe there was some trenching, and we came in and kind of targeted an intersection, a vein intersection that we could see in the historical trenching, which plugged into this very nice high-grade core within the Lotto main vein. Both the Lotto and Golden Joint veins have been followed for about 250 meters or so along strike and down to depths about 300, 325. At this time, we're focusing on exploring near surface mineralization, uh, but these will definitely be revisited one day to continue that work to expand on them. So flipping back to the video here, we'll continue north east along the Appleton. As we fly over Golden Joint, you can see some of the spectacular results from, from that vein. Through to do Dome here, sitting on the east side of the Appleton. That historical showing that really kind of started it all. And then on to, uh, on to Lotto a very rich gold bearing vein. Uh, again, quite unique in that it's sitting uh, about 200 or so meters from uh, the Appleton Fault, uh, which is a bit, a bit different than a lot of the other zones you'll see there. Here we are arriving at lot of North. And we have new zones that we need to add to this video because they have come online since it was produced. But the Lotto North is believed to be the continuation of that Lotto structure, so the structure that controls the Lotto main vein. And I will pull up the model to show you that. We've come through Lotto, and this is Lotto North. Very similar orientation. And one thing through our work, we are of starting to realize that some of these zones have been chopped up by drop faulting, so, so uh, offsets that have occurred after the mineralization was in place or maybe very late in, in its d development, and it's kind of offset these things. So here we've managed to track onto this, this high-grade gold bearing structure uh, through this segment of the Appleton. You can see it's in pretty close proximity to it. Again, a number of structures tracking through there and associated veins, and we've uh, yeah, we've had some pretty encouraging results from from this area. Th this was all discovered through systematic test work of drills, stepping along the Appleton at a set spacing, looking for near surface gold mineralization within about 250 meters or so of the Appleton Fault. While we're here in the model, I'll also point out Monte Carlo. This was recently released a few months ago. We've had several high-grade hits into it so far. Its character is very similar to Lotto, so it's this nice, beautiful, discrete vein in um, a narrow, kind of brittle structure. Uh, but very high grade in places and you can see striking again at an orientation we've seen before but very early days for that one so we have plans to return here to Monte Carlo but these are some of the new additions to the West Side Story and these were directly targeted looking for structural lineaments that we can see in the topography 
uh, breaks in some of the geophysical products that work in these sedimentary units to identify structures that are in that kind of Keats orientation. So we were drawn to here and sure enough Monte Carlo was discovered and then into what was historically known as Zone 36, which was originally found from trenching. There was a vein exposed in a trench here, which is this guy tracking through here, which turns out it was only a vein kind of adjacent to a more master structure, which is K2 here. So again, another broad, brittle deformation zone, similar orientation to the baseline fault and uh, and gold bearing. We've only released a handful of holes from here. We've got a lot of results to come out of these areas and a lot more work to be done to expand on them. So both are very early days uh, but we are quite active in these areas. And lastly we're coming to the end of our segment of the Appleton which on this segment of our property is about nine and a half kilometers long. We've recently added also another six or so kilometers in the north on our VOA option and then heading down into the southern block over 80 kilometers or so of the projection of the Appleton. So I'm going to bounce back to the video and we'll finish our flyover the last segment of the Appleton Fault Zone. So flying past Lotto North, so again the continuation of what we believe to be the Lotto, Lotto structure. Uh, zone 36, which might confuse you now because we've started talking more about the K2 structure, which seems to be the master structure that is related to Zone 36. But again, this was an adjacent vein that was uncovered in trenching. And then through more targeted work on the west side of the fault, we plugged into the K2 fault. And from there, you can see our project continues again for another 1.6 kilometers until we then pick up again on that, that added length of six kilometers on the VOA option, where we're actively doing um, some boots on the ground work there currently to advance targets to the drill ready phase. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this video was informative. Stay tuned for additional news to come from our exploration activities along this segment of the Alpton Fault Zone. Thanks very much.